Revelation chapter 12. Amen. I want to look here at verse 10. Through verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 through verse 12. And the text reads, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and you that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we bless you in Christ Jesus. We ask that we would have an ear to hear. Yes, Lord. That we might discern the voice of the Spirit of God. And we will be careful to give your name the praise. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we're coming out of Revelation chapter 12. And when you look at verse 10, the text says, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the scripture brings out the accuser of the brethren. And the word accuser comes from the Latin diablos, which means adversary or enemy. And when Lucifer fell from heaven by way of his own pride, his name was changed to Satan, which means adversary. Now, because Satan is God's adversary, he too is our adversary. Amen. He is our enemy. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. And the text brings it out how the accuser of our brethren accused the saints before God day and night. So in other words, he was attempting to prosecute them. Right. Amen. And the word prosecute means to bring legal action against someone for breaking the law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But even though many have broken the law of God, Jesus has become our defense attorney. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, the text says, My little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I want you to know that these particular saints in the book of Revelation chapter 12 that were being accused by Satan the devil, you can have comfort in knowing that if you sin, First John chapter 1 and verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
praise God. Hallelujah. Solomon, the son of David, says it like this. In Proverbs chapter 24, beginning at verse 16, the text says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Praise God. But if you look at verse 16, he said, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. And that is predicated if he confess his sins. God is faithful and just to forgive him and cleanse him from all unrighteousness. So we can see in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1 that Jesus is our defense attorney. He's our advocate who will plead your case before the Father. Hallelujah. But even though the sins of the believer in Christ Jesus has been remitted, Satan will still attempt to accuse them. Right, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a prosecutor. Yeah. And a prosecutor has no mercy mm -hmm. yeah. on the one they are attempting to prosecute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want everybody that Satan knows the law. And that's why he's always attempting to get us to transgress against God's law. Because he wants to be in a position to be able to prosecute you. Hallelujah. Amen. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. Before our God day and night. 
But watch this. And they, speaking of the saints, overcame him, speaking of the devil. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Praise God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And let me tell you how wicked the devil is. The devil will bring up past sins. Yeah. Even things that God has forgiven you of. If God has forgiven you, he'll try to make you believe that God has not forgiven you when he has actually forgiven you. Amen. He wants you to have a guilt trip yeah. where you will become miserable and you will become uh, uh, stressed out Amen. over things that you have done, Amen. but yet you have forgotten that was washed in the blood when you repented of your sins and turned from your evil ways. But the accuser of a brethren has a way of making you believe that God has not forgiven you when he actually has. Come on somebody. Amen. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And you got mankind who are nothing more but children of the devil that will follow their father the devil. They will do likewise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 beginning in verse 27. And the text reads, an ungodly man diggeth up evil. Notice it didn't say a righteous man. Right. Because a righteous man doeth righteousness even as he is righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But an ungodly man, he will do the works of his father, the devil. He will dig up evil. Amen. And throw it right in your face. Hallelujah. You know, this is what politicians do. If any of you decide to run for political office in the near future, they're going to dig deep into your past. They'll bring up stuff you did when you were 16. They'll bring up stuff you did when you were 13. What they're trying to do is smear your image and paint a bleak picture in the minds of the voters. Yeah. Hello somebody. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. See this is just how wicked the devil is. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. He said an ungodly man did it of evil. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And this holds true for a lot of people that are children of the devil. He goes on to say and in his lips there is a burning fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Has somebody ever forgiven you of things that you've done against them, but they continue to bring it back up every chance they get? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when you are righteous and holy, you follow Jesus. Because the scripture said that when God forgives us of our sins, he cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. He remembers it no more. He blocked out our transgressions. Are you listening to me? And he never brings it back up again. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But when you are of your father, the devil, you'll bring it up every chance you get. Now, some of you got to remember, there's some things you've done you ain't never repented of. There's some people you have went to, you ain't never apologized for some of the things you have done to them. Say behind their back, went over to other people, over their house, talking about this person, talking about the man of God. You ain't never confessed and repented of your sins one time. Amen. Come on to that. You just swept it under the rug. Are you listening to me? 
I'm just trying to show you something. There are some things people have never repented of, but they try to act like it don't exist. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, an ungodly man digged up evil. And in his lips, there's a burning fire. Hallelujah. They'll do exactly like their father, the devil. They will accuse you of things that you were supposed to be forgiven of. Things that they said they forgave you for. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Because the devil will sure enough accuse you when you commit a sin. And more so, after those sins have been washed in the blood, he will continue to accuse you and make you believe that those sins you have confessed and forsaken have never been forgiven you by God. Because he, he wants you to feel guilty and become stressed whereby you ready to take your life. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Praise God. But I don't care what a person has done. There's not one person in this room that God has got up from his throne and let you take his seat. And this is how people act. They act like they are God. They don't forgive. They won't let things go. But did you not know those same people huh, want God to forgive them? Huh, and they want God to let it go? Huh, things that they have done huh, that are in violation huh, of his word. Huh, are you listening to me? Praise God. Are you listening? Now you got to understand if you want grace, you got to be willing to give grace. If you want mercy, you got to be willing to give mercy. If you want to be blessed, you got to learn how to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus brought that out in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 25 and verse 26. And the text reads, And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Praise God. And I believe that many have forgotten that text of scripture. Because you find them doing the opposite. They want God to forgive them when they are unwilling to forgive others that have trespassed against them. Praise God. What did the apostle teach us in Ephesians chapter 4? Beginning at verse 31. Hallelujah. Now if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're supposed to have the love of Christ within you. He says in the text, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now somebody said it's not always easy. Well, I agree. There are times it is not always easy, but you got to find the courage. You better find the will. You better find the mercy to put these things away from you, lest you find yourself violating the, the, the kingdom of God. Are you listening? Because if you don't put these things away from you, you cannot walk in the love of God. And you would have transgressed his law. What did he say? He said love is the fulfilling of the law. And love covers a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. Praise God. And this is why we need the spirit of God. To help us. We need him to aid us. To support us. To strengthen us. When we are weak. And we want to yield to the flesh and do otherwise. But we must walk in the spirit. We must walk in the love of Jesus. And the scripture says in verse 
verse 32, and be kind one to another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're not to walk around and condemn others. Because they committed offense against you. Some people say, well, they didn't, they didn't do it to me. So I feel differently that somebody did something to somebody else. But as long as they didn't do it to me, praise God. You see how nutty that professor is? Hallelujah. Can I say that again? You see how nutty that professor is to make such a wicked statement out of their mouth? Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. There's not one person in this room that can condemn anybody. Because you're not the almighty God. Hallelujah. And if God chooses to forgive somebody, who are you to hold a grudge against them? Come on. Remember when God sent Jonah the prophet to Nineveh? And Jonah preached that judgment was coming upon the land in 40 days. And after the Ninevites clothed themselves in clubs and called in ashes, repented of their sins and put the evil from them. And God showed mercy and spared them. Then Jonah was found over yonder, sunken. You want to know why? He thought that God should have judged them. of the world. God is not wanting to just damn people. People damn themselves by making the decision to re renounce the truth of God, to reject Jesus Christ and resist the Holy Ghost. Mankind makes that decision to damn his own soul. It is not God's will that any perish. But they all come to repentance. God would have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. But even though that is God's will, most people don't want to be in God's will. Majority of people want to go to heaven, but they don't understand. There's a way to enter into his gates. And that is through Jesus Christ and the blood he shed on the cross. Hallelujah. You can't bypass Jesus Christ. You cannot ignore the blood that was shed for the remission of sin. And yet gain entry into his heavenly kingdom. Praise God. And that's what most are attempting to do. They don't want to repent. They don't want to have to believe on Jesus. They don't have to receive the Holy Ghost. They don't have to sanctify themselves and live a consecrated life that pleases the Father. They want to look for other ways to enter into the kingdom. Opposite of Jesus Christ and his word. Are you listening to me? Praise God. But there's not one person in this room that can condemn anybody. Because you're not almighty God. Amen. You know what the apostle said in Romans chapter 8? Listen to what he says. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 34 the text says, Who is he that condemned? Even when Jesus first came into the world, he didn't come to condemn man. He came to save man. Now when he come back for the second time, he's not coming to save man. He's coming to pour out his wrath upon the world of the ungodly. Amen. Hallelujah. But when Jesus came the first time, manifested in the flesh, he didn't come to condemn man. He came to bring salvation Amen. to the world. But the text says in verse 
verse 34, who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Can I ask you all a question? Who did you die for? Who did you shed your blood for? When were you resurrected from the dead with all power in your hand? When did you go up in the cloud where you're now standing at the right hand of the majesty on high? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Praise God. In Galatians chapter 6. Now here, here's the Holy Ghost moving through the life of a believer in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And just as Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive and to recover the sight of the blind, this is exactly how every child of God should be moving in love and compassion. We want to reach our brother and our sister. Hallelujah. You're not to condemn them because I want you to ever remember, I want you to ever forget where you came from. You may not have went to the club, but you were fornicating with some boy. You may not have smoked reefer, but you was fornicating with some girl. Come on, somebody. You were doing some ungodly things with them. Are you listening to me? So don't think because I didn't club and I didn't drink and I didn't smoke. Let me tell you something. The Bible brings out a multiplicity of sins. And there is not a sin that's not unto the dead. So don't think you better than somebody who, and because you haven't done certain sins that they may have done or are presently doing. Those people need deliverance. And they don't get, they can get delivered if they want to be delivered. Right, 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 right. Now listen to what the text says. In Galatians chapter 6. Now I want, I, I want to remind you of what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 24. If a just man fall seven times, he rises up again. He can get back up again. If he confess his sins, God is faithful and just to forgive him and cleanse him from him all his unrighteousness. Praise God. But here in Galatians 6, beginning at verse 1, look at the text. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Amen. You're not to be giving them the eye. You're not to be looking at them shaking your head at them. Right. Praise God. Are you listening to me? That ain't the spirit of meekness. That's you pronouncing judgment on them. What a shame, what a shame. And it may be a shame. But when I get to read this particular verse, then that shame can fall right on you if you ain't careful. And you're not going to want nobody to look at you and shake their head at you. You want them to be delicate with you. You want them to help you. You want them to understand. You're not trying to justify your sin, but you don't want them to judge you as if they God. Come on, somebody. He says in the text, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens. See, that's what the love of God does. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen? And we all know the law of Christ. That is that we're to love one another. That's what love does. Hallelujah. And then he says, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not good to put your mouth on people. Because you are not God Almighty. Truth be told, there's a lot of stuff 
that we have done nobody know about to this day. But we'll walk around like the adulterous woman who wiped her mouth and said, I haven't done no wickedness. You know why? Because nobody knows what she done. But God knows what you done. God knows your business. God knows my business. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 1, the text says, Judge not that you be not judged. Now, everybody is quick to quote that verse, but they quote it out of context because God teaches us as believers in Christ Jesus that we are to judge all things, but we're to do it in a righteous manner. Praise God. He that is spiritual judging all things, yet he himself is judged by no man. Praise God. Are you listening to me? But he says, judge not that you be not judged. Now he's not saying in this text, you cannot judge because when you read the whole context, you'll understand he was teaching his disciples that when you judge, don't judge hypocritically. If you got a moat in your eye, don't be trying to judge somebody else when you doing the same thing or something worse than they doing. Amen. Listen to what he says. Judge not that you be not judged. For what with judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. That's why you got to be careful what you do. Because the same way you do others, God said, I'm going to bring it back on you. Because Romans chapter 1, verse 29 to 32 teaches how many would become unmerciful. Hallelujah. They acting just like they follow the devil. Hallelujah. Because he is unmerciful. A prosecutor is unmerciful. That's why he's called the accuser of the brethren. He's not concerned about your soul. He wants you to be damned for all of eternity right along with him. Because he knows he got a short time. He knows the day is coming. He's going to be cast into the lake of fire right along with the beast and the false prophet. He knows what Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10 said. And that's why he's working over time to deceive the whole world to worship him. And many are falling for it. Yep. They're falling for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The accuser of the breath. His mm -hmm. motive. It's still the same. To steal, kill, and destroy. And even though God has forgiven his people for their transgressions, the enemy will come right behind them and try to make them believe that God has not forgiven them, that they are not saved, And cause them to become disruptive. See, the enemy knows how to play on your emotions. That's why you got to guard your heart. You got to learn how to rule your own spirit. And not allow the enemy to manipulate you and cause you to become over emotional whereby you begin to do things and say things out of character. You begin to do things and say things outside of the will of God because you are no longer walking in the realm of the spirit but you're now yielding to your emotions. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He don't want you to walk in the spirit. He don't want you to abide 
in the word of God. He wants you to lean to your own understanding. He wants you to be wise in your own conceit. If God has forgiven you, believe what is written. You have been forgiven. Now go and sin no more. Let the worst thing come upon you. Amen? Amen. You can't listen to the devil. Because he will talk to you in a way that will break you down and make your knees start shaking. And when you know it, you're bowing down at his feet. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The devil can't just talk to me. Because I got to put the word on him. If I'm a fight him off, I got to put the word on him. I can't sit there and have a conversation with him. Neither can I let him talk to me without me opening up my mouth and putting the word on Because if you listen to him too long without rising up in a war cry, you eventually will become convinced. You know, he was talking to old Eve in the garden. And he was talking to her too long. Scripture says her husband with her, which means he was standing right there the whole time the serpent was talking to his wife. And he didn't intervene and say nothing. Praise God. Are you listening? Now, please understand, the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan the devil, he is our adversary. He is the enemy of our souls. Hallelujah. And yes, he has children upon the earth that are doing his works. Amen. Amen. Remember what he said to the unbelieving Jews in the Gospel of John chapter 8. And verse 44, Jesus said to them, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. See that? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What did he say? You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. What Satan called the accuser of the brethren in Revelation chapter 12. Praise God. What did Solomon the son of David bring out in chapter 20, chapter 14? Hallelujah. What did he bring out? I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 27. He said, an ungodly man did of evil. Hallelujah. They'll unearth everything that you've done in your life, including those things that you have been forgiven of. And he'll throw it right back in your face as if you are currently doing it. But how many know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a merciful God and he will block out your transgressions and remember them no more. And when God forgives you, uh, you are forgiven. Come on, somebody. That's when the devil begins to attack your mind. Uh, you got to lift up a war cry. You got to put the word of God on them. Uh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because the text says in Revelation chapter 12, and verse 11, it says, and they overcame him. Overcame who? Satan the devil who was accusing them before their God day and night. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. See that? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen? Amen. And then it says, and they overcame him by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. They was willing to die for the name Jesus because they understood there was a better resurrection that was coming. And they would be called up to meet the Lord in the air. Praise God. The dead in Christ first and them that are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Come on somebody. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Satan, the devil, is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. But the scripture says, and they, the saints of God, them who have been redeemed out of the hand of the enemy, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. When the devil begin to talk to your mind and tell you you ain't saved, you got to put the word on. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, by grace are you saved. And not by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Put the word on. Are you listening? Praise God. When he tell you your sins are still on you, God is not forgiving you. But the scripture says, by the shedding of the blood, there is a forgiveness of sin. Because if Jesus would have never shed his blood on the cross, our sins could never have been washed away. Come on, somebody. So you got to put the word on. You can't sit back in your recliner chair and get you a cold pack and put it on your head because the devil beat your brains in. If you're going to survive and endure to the end, you got to put the word on them. Come on, somebody. You got to say what God said. Yes. Yes. Glory. Yes, there are children of the devil. They will accuse you. They will falsely accuse you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Does this make sense? Amen. So stop believing the devil Amen. and his lies. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, when Jesus has come to sit on the throne of your life, you got to know that for yourself. You can't guess it. You can't wonder about it. When you have had a divine experience with God because of the blood that was shed on Calvary, you got an assurance that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And your sins are now under the blood. It don't make no difference what the devil say or what man says. Hallelujah. My sins are under the blood. I'm a new creature in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you got to have salvation just like the Bible said. Or you have been deceived by that same devil. You understand? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some people ain't got nothing to shout about. Because shouting means I got the victory. And my victory has been given me through Jesus Christ. That's why some people can't shout. They can't praise God. Because they ain't got nothing to shout about. They can't praise God because they in bondage. They may go through the motions. But the truth is, whatever they trying to do, they don't really at Calvary and died for their sins. That's why they're still in sin. Because they don't believe. If you believe, why are you still in sin? Because you don't believe. You can talk all the religious talk all you want, but when you get done, your life testifies that you are a child of the devil because you're bearing for corrupt fruit. You're rejecting the word. You're resisting the Holy Ghost. You have mentally turned your back on God. The one that loved you more than anybody. Hello, sir. Are you listening to me? Amen. That's why the scripture says in Psalms 
7. Clap your hands, all ye people. He's talking to the beloved. And shout with the voice of triumph. And you know why many can't praise God and shout? Because they don't have no victory. They're living in everyday defeat. Your sins is what's overcoming you. But Jesus came that we might overcome sin. Hallelujah. Jesus was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. And in him we can have victory. We can be overcomers. Hallelujah. And to them that overcome, they shall wear a crown. They shall wear a crown. to the death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though God heard the accusing of Satan against his people, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, who the scripture says in 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, he's our advocate. He's our defense attorney. Yeah. He come to get you off. It's true that the wages of sin is death. And God has every right to damn us in the hell. But Jesus steps in. Stands in the gap. Makes up the head. And pleads our case. Are you listening? 
And God is willing to pardon us of our sin because of the blood. You better hear me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You better hear me. Jesus steps in as our defense attorney to plead your case. And God is willing to pardon your sin Amen. and let you go free because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yes. But you must repent and turn from your wicked ways Amen. and put your faith in him Hallelujah. that you may become a partaker of his righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the new birth. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's when you receive his divine nature on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So I encourage you. Don't allow the accuser of the brethren to manipulate your mind and make you feel the opposite of what God has already said about you. If he's forgiven you, you've been forgiven. But go and sin no more. Hallelujah. You know what he told the adulterous woman? Yes. Isn't that what he told the man who had the withered hand? Amen. That he healed? Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. And I can most certainly tell you that after he forgave that adulterous woman and said, go and sin no more, there were people that still saw her every now and then calling her an adulteress. And yes, she had committed that sin, but Jesus had forgiven her. And after Jesus had forgiven her of her transgression, she was no longer an adulterer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Her crime had been pardoned. But you know how mankind is. Mankind is operating under that unclean spirit. They'll still call you a liar, an adulterer, a deceiver, evil, even after God has forgiven you, they'll continue to accuse you and say, you ain't changed. You ain't changed. Hallelujah. Are you listening? They won't hang around long enough to see that you've really been changed. That your sins are under the blood and you have changed. And you're walking different, living different, talking different. Ever since Jesus showed up in your life and took your sins away. Praise God. Are you listening to it? Why you gotta be wet? When Jesus pardons you of your sins, go and sin no more. Praise God. But if a just man fall, you can get back up again. All the, all the accusers need to shut up. Who are you that condemn? Who are you to condemn? You didn't die for them. You didn't shed blood for them, neither did you get up from the grave after being there three days and three nights, and you surely didn't ascend to the throne of the majesty on high. Who are you to condemn? Amen. Hmm? Amen. See, well, them that are mature in the faith, he said, restore such a one. Because the day may come, you might need that same grace. Exactly. Amen. That same touch from God. Amen. You don't need nobody trying to judge you and put you down. You need somebody to help you. I messed up. I did some stuff I shouldn't have did. Come on. I said some things I shouldn't have said. I got in the flesh and I did some stuff I shouldn't have did. I'm shamed about it. I'm sad about it. I'm godly sorry about it. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? But we live in a day now, all we want to do is just condemn people. Right, right. Like we God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, you got to understand that even when the man of God preach, you know how most, most people think you condemn them? And you're not condemning them. You're showing them their transgressions. You, God is calling out to them to repent. What did the apostle say in Romans 7? I would have not even known lust except the law said, Thou shalt not cut it. So somebody got to preach it so you can hear it. How can you call on him in whom you have not heard? And how can you hear unless the man of God preach it? Come on, somebody. So I learned to overlook the crowd that says you y'all condemn it. Amen. Amen. What about God's love? They don't even want God's love. Did you not know that Jesus Christ is God's love manifested? So obviously you don't really know what love is because God sent his only begotten son into the world. Whereby he became the sacrifice. Where his body was nailed to a cross. And a spear was thrust in his side. What did that happen for? Jesus loved us. Made down his life for us. Shed his blood for us. So that you would have a right to what you feel like. So you would not have to die and spend eternity in hell fire. For you. That's why I don't let that crap manipulate you. Y'all condemning people. No, you're condemning yourself. I'm trying to stretch my hand out. And when I stretch my hand out, that's Jesus stretching his hand out. In Jeremiah, the text said, his arms are outstretched still. Praise God. And when I stretch my hand out, God is stretching his hand out. When I'm preaching this word, God is talking to you. Hello, somebody. Praise God. So the accuser of the brethren knows he got but a short time. Because he knows his days are numbered. But if he can accuse the saints and get you to believe, you know, because you're having a, a you're going through a trial in your life. Right. God doesn't hear your prayers. Right. You're not really saved. He'll put all kind of thoughts in your mind. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. Praise God. But you know what he told us to do? In the text, praise God. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. The devil is attempting to, to build a stronghold in your mind. That way he can bring you captive to his will. And he can control you. Praise God. But the text goes on to say in verse 5, casting down imagination. Where are those imaginations coming from? Satan the devil. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Those evil thoughts are being planted in your mind by Satan the devil. Now, the children of God should not give the enemy easy access to your mind. We're supposed to put on the helmet of salvation. It's supposed to protect the mind. Come on, somebody. But when we yield to the flesh, when we find ourselves reading magazines we shouldn't read, looking at stuff on television we shouldn't look at, listening to music we shouldn't listen to, you're giving the enemy access to your mind. He's attempting to set up a stronghold. And he speaks to the beloved that has the Holy Ghost. He said, casting down those imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought. Look at your neighbor and say, every thought. Every thought. Every thought. To the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Test the power of God to do that. Test the word of God to do that. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Praise God. The accuser of our brethren has waged an all-out war against the beloved. 
but you gotta stand firm in the truth. Hold fast to the faith without wavering. Praise God. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They love not their lives unto the death. Praise God. Somebody bless him with a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 